So, um, good afternoon. Uh, good up. Good morning. No, I don't know. It's, it's, it's twelve o'clock, so it's <laughs> it depends. So, uh, I'm Joel, uh, Joel, and Tanya. We are here in behalf as well of uh, two other members, Andre and Liliana. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank you because our presentation it's a little bit it's slightly out of the traditional way of uh, seeing rock art. So, this uh, twenty thousand hour old uh, name that we gave to the paper is precisely. Uh, because we want to, it helps us to introduce a thing that we believe prevents us to see rock art in a wider way. Okay, so more inclusive. That's we, we, what we think about. The thing that I will introduce and then I'll pass to Joao and, and Tanya, it's, it's time perspectivism, what we call time perspectivism. I, I, will, I will show you something that is, okay? No. Okay. Okay, something that is not new. So try to imagine that uh, the hearse the started uh, 24 hours ago. Okay, so 24 hours ago, so we would have to wait five hours to see the first uh, spark of life. Okay, to, to, so that, then we could continue like this, so the first cells, the multi-cells, and then the, the trilobite, that is a very ancient thing, it would come up three hours ago. Okay, so, and then one hour ago, one hour ago, we have, sorry? Yeah, I know. But yeah, we have, no, 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 no. Okay, so we, we have, we have, in one hour ago, the, all the dinosaurs in the earth, okay, more or less, more, the most of the dinosaurs in the earth, we would have seen us. In the last minute, I, I believe you are imagining what we have seen, okay, the first genus Homos would appear in the last minute. The last minute. Okay, so, and, and if we're talking about the species, the sapiens, it would be the last six seconds, the most ancient one, the Ghibli round, six seconds. Okay, so, do you know what we have seen, uh, what would, would have uh, seen in the last second? Rock art. Okay, so we would have seen rock art. So in the last second, all rock art, all. Okay, even the most ancient or the most non-ancient in the world, uh, I believe it's Indonesia, it's found 45,000 years ago, the last second. Okay, so the, the first, the first uh, uh, genus, Omo would say, oh, uh, that, that thing, rock art and the world, second world war, that's all contemporary stuffs. Everything would be contemporary for the for the genus almost. Okay, and and that's 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 what we call it's the the time perspective is. Okay, that that's so to, so to imagine, for example, so we are near Lascaux, then Lascaux is to for the for the previous Indonesian. We are near for them. That that's time perspective. So, but in our brain, in our brain, we connect Lascaux and and Indonesian in an easier way that we connect Lascaux with us. But we are near to them than they were from the Indonesia. So. This is time perspectivism. And that, that's what we would like to challenge. This, not misconstruct, to, to open in wider the, the, the way we see all rock art. So we would like to, to, to see rock art in, in, a, in a different perspective, more inclusive. That's our example. We call it the wall. And uh, yeah, we, we call it the wall. The wall will start uh, to be carved 70 uh, years ago, 70, and is still carved today. Okay? But the, the, the wall, it's near to Las Cuevas, then Las Cuevas is to everything that we've seen so far. It's here to the Scandinavian uh, uh, um, carving that we've seen, that everything, but no, we connect that things in the same symposium, we connect the Lascaux and, and everything, and this gets out, it's, this is time perspectivism. That's why we call it the 20,000 hour, 20, hours uh, old raw card because we are doing the time perspective in the, the other way around. This is a very long time ago. It is not. And that's, that's our, our uh, challenge here. Bring a different way of seeing raw card, more inclusive. Okay, so more contemporary. And let's wait for the finish. How can we use these in, in a certain way to interpret the very old raw card as well? Okay, Joan, can you? Thank you. Well, um, let me tell you. I always started with this study. Um, I was driving my kid, that little brat that is around there somewhere, uh, on a summer morning. Um, I had already been there for um, a couple of times, but on that day, there it was, right in front of my eyes. Um, this wall can be easily uh, be ignored due to the poor conditions of the, the roads. It's dusty and full of bumps. Um, in that morning, I took some pictures. And later, this group started the discussion. <clears throat> if we could think of this as um, archaeology in Portuguese academic context, um, 300 meters of a, a large two meters height uh, wall uh, with carved messages regarding names, love messages, political statements, uh, among other subjects. Uh, 
It was engraved uh, with some kind of sharp metal tool, pocket knives or keys, um, you know, complex palimpsest. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, where it is, in case if someone wants to go there, <laughs> Portugal, of course, uh, near our hometown Almada. Uh, this uh, wall uh, right there, we can't see it from here, but it's just to, so you can see where it stands, um, belongs to the Navy. But uh, the, this, um, uh, this uh, wall that we are talking here belongs to a sub-realm of the Navy. It's the Marine Corps. Uh, since the 50s, passing people, mostly teenagers, knew this. And we guess that the engravings have a close uh, relation to the fact that it was something forbidden, some sort of daring act. On Google Street View, uh, we found some we found some landscape archaeology works, and uh, we started to discuss if we could play with this idea. At first, to cause some discomfort within academic authorities, and quickly found that something like this could be much more than mere provocation. Sometimes, <clears throat> as we are going to see, uh, very stupid people with driving licenses, licenses, and fast cars crash against the wall uh, during Mad Max style races, uh, does the holes and large fractures uh, that are going to show up there. Yeah, unfortunately. <sighs> no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> there is an abandoned cod processing plant at the end of the roads. Beautiful landscape with shores and the waterside uh, with abandoned water mills on some Nearby warehouses, we saw homeless signs and materialities, some graffiti from local artists and stolen uh, vehicles, lots of stolen vehicles along the way. Sometimes we, we guess that th they are the outcomes of the, the Mad Max style races that I told you before. Um, and next, next, please. Thank you. So due to the strict security rules of the Marine Corps, um, drones and laser surveys need permission, <laughs> very kind permission. We asked nicely, uh, Tanya pulled a few strings. Uh, our colleagues Andrea Tschug and Liliana Verissim, members of this team, are the ones who are going to explore the complete three-dimensional survey with a DGI Phantom 4 Pro drone and laser scanning for better surface details. Um, and we know that the Marines are not going to shoot the equipment because the base commander is going with us. Or so he promised us when we were invited to take coffee and cake, carrot cake and chocolate cake, with him at the two more important Navy bases in Portugal. This was weird. We had to pass through all security thing. But we were able to contact the Navy, or AKA the owner of the wall. The wall. But now all of those high commanders in Almerance, which don't call us by our names, but by all the fancy things they invent about us, um, seem more excited than we are to pursue the tales of the people who actually wrote on the wall. And that is, in fact, one of the major questions of our research. Who were João, Maria, Sonia, Vera, Nando? Just to name a few of the many who inscribed their names on that wall. Initially, we had some theories. People on their way to the beach, workers on the Atlantic factory, uh, or even the military. The amazing thing about working in contemporary archaeology is the fact that we can ask. Uh, our subjects are not dead, or they are either alive, or people that actually remember them quite well are alive. So we asked. I use all social media platforms to send messages asking if anyone knew anything about that wall and the people who wrote there. Most of these messages were blank shots. We didn't get any reply. But in the group call, Militejo in the 80s, uh, the answers came back and were extraordinary. I cannot quote all of them here, but just to give you an idea, it seems that it was something that the majority of teenagers, because they told me they were young and wild, did it. And you can see this. I don't know if you... Uh, I, I don't know if you can see in the, in the back of the room what people told me on the left side uh, when I replied, saying, Who, whoever knows, who knows people who wrote on this wall? And in fact, as suddenly a huge amount of people, about 300, 400 people replied, I did it, my brother did it, my cousin did it, so everyone did it. 
After we replies, I contacted the majority of them by private message. My main questions were, among others, how and why. Why were they engraving their name there? And the answers were actually amazing as well. Uh, but the most pertinent one, and the one that actually impresses us most, is because everyone did it. We don't have a reason. Our friends did it. Uh, we know everyone did it, so why not do it again? And this opened up to uh, a different kind of world. Um, all the places they talk about, uh, they, they talked about me, what was that? Uh, sorry, you can do it. Um, um, all the places they talk about there are still there. The factory, the beach, the swamp. And I got the feeling through our conversations, because then I called, they gave me their phone numbers, we had a conversation, that this wall was the pride of a generation, something they claimed as their own. Another very interesting story was when I told them we were archaeologists and we were interested in the wall and their stories. Uh, of all of them, so, but do you think we are that old? So the idea of getting them to engage, and this was a very interesting project that we are still defending. Now we have the city hall on our hand and we are developing a community engagement project. We have the wall generation, we call it the wall generation, and they all are, so we will have further development further ahead. But the idea is to take them there next spring and they can identify each of the places where they wrote and we can do an album and try to publish something on the way that how do they feel, how those emotions are still present in the world and how does the community feel engaged with them. Um, but we got this idea that we can communicate, as archaeologists, we can communicate with a group, with a community uh, that actually saw themselves as something, as united through this kind of rock art. So you can. Okay, that, that's, that's what we think uh, so the contemporary rock art can bring to the, to the rock art as a, as, as a whole. So while, while we cannot go back and ask, why have you did Las Co, why have you did Las Manos, why have you did what you did, okay? So we can go back to, to these people and ask them, why have you done it? Why have you did what you did? Or, or, or have you done what you did? Or what, what, what did you feel while you were doing it, okay? And the question is, can, can we use those emotions? Because we know that emotions haven't changed in the, the last 40, 50,000 years. So can we use those emotions to try to understand what emotions felt people in the past? That, that is, is one of our questions and one of our challenges. And that was one of our jokes together, like yeah. that, that someone put his hand there and then someone put his hand there and someone put his hand there and suddenly everyone was picking their hands just because everyone did it. It was a magic place or just because I passed there and there was a hand there and I just put a hand there, yeah. Okay, so us? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, one of the things that distinguish this wall from the traditional rock art is that we do not consider these types of human manifestations as art. We see it as counter-cultural movement. Um, have you heard about the Pichu movement uh, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, os pichadores? Uh, this is something that is done only because they are anti-political or because uh, some famous and daring guy does it. Uh, some of them do it to become notorious, uh, to become famous. Uh, or just because everybody's doing it, so most of the time uh, it can be considered a trend. We think the wall, although using scratches, it has a, a similar social meaning. So thank you so much. No. So, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't want, we don't want you to think that we, we would like you to, to. Oh no, we should use the contemporary rock art to, to understand the, the past. But uh, why not to use this, uh, this, those kind of emotions and to go a little a bit deeper on what's happening now to try to understand what happened in the past to, to try to understand what's happening now. That's our challenge.